What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm going to check out top 10 WWE announcers who got their favorite wrestlers over huge. Now, wrestling doesn't just only involve what you see in the ring, the promo packages, you know, the promo segments, the feud. What make wrestling sometimes memorable is who's calling the matches and how the matches are being called. Those a lot of times can help a wrestler get even more over. We all know Stone Cold Steve Austin is one of the greatest wrestlers ever. And what helped to his ascension? Obviously, the voice behind Stone Cold and behind that era of wrestling, Jim Ross. Him selling Stone Cold coming to the ring. And obviously, you know, being in the favor of what Stone Cold would do for the most part. It helped get him even more over. He was already heading there, but because of JR's commentary too, it helped. So, you know, I'm sure he's going to be on this list. I'm sure in relation to Stone Cold, he should be on this list. But we're going to check this out. Appreciate all the love and support y'all showing on channel. Let's get into it, man. Is this on? As the soundtrack who provide the lyrics to wrestling, the commentators are vital in getting talent over, and some announcers will have certain wrestlers they gravitate to most. It's Steve! Yep. Yeah. As seen from how excited they get behind the announce desk. I'm eating all over myself! Eating all over myself! Today, we want to highlight those whose commentary is synonymous with a specific performer. Uh huh. As we list 10 commentators, yep. favorite wrestlers. <laughs> Before we start the list, there's yes. some honorable mentions to Paul Heyman and Rhino. Gore, Gore. yep. Oh my God. <laughs> Taz and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. Well, here comes the pain. Here comes the pain. Lesnar. Well, here comes the pain. Here comes the pain. <laughs> And Taz would say it every every time the same way. Well, here comes the pain. He would never switch up his inflections for the most part. He says, "Well, here comes the pain." Here comes the pain. 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 This is heavy. And lastly, Booker T. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Huh? I like it. Oh yeah, oh, man. I like it. Oh yeah, man. man yeah. Oh yeah, man. That's oh. great. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? That's right. Number That's 10, right. <laughs> That's right. Nah, man. Trick Williams, his entrance is elevated with the crowd, the beat, and then Booker T. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. That's trick, bro. It works. That's why it's gonna suck when he gets to the main roster because we're not gonna have Booker T calling, like doing the commentary when he comes down to the ring. It's just it's not gonna be as impactful for us viewing at home for sure. But Booker T definitely deserves to be on this list as well. LA Knight. Wade Barrett deserves credit in helping LA Knight resonate with the WWE audience. Right back over here. At least we got somebody with a little bit of bass in their voice. <laughs> he sang Knight's praises, helping him feel like the megastar he would soon become. Oh, 
Don't do it. Don't do it. Please. And loins have been tingling ever since oh, you yeah. sat down, LA Knight. Hey, yo. I just want to listen to that guy talk for two straight hours, Corey. Can we do that? Wade's excitement and energy shows how important a role announcers play in elevating the talent mm -hmm. in the ring. Mm -hmm. Tune the Kavorka. Give the people what they want. Yeah. This is Logan <laughs> United States Championship at SummerSlam. Sign, sealed, delivered. Yeah. <laughs> the face of a champion. He has the body of a champion. He has uh. the shoes of a but champion. You know yeah! And we're going to have ourselves a money in the bank mega star Michael Cole. Number nine, JBL and King Booker. Oh, King Booker was a highlight man. of SmackDown in 2006, <laughs> as was JBL on commentary. The poor kid from Houston, Texas has risen to the top. Especially whenever Bradshaw would worship Book during his world heavyweight <laughs> title reign. Oh, it's like Camelot revisited. Oh, oh, oh my. Get ready for a divine moment. Layfield treated the champion just like the king, Booker <laughs> to We are so lucky in America. In a home where we have no king. This is like a religious experience. It's like a Muslim meeting Muhammad. He's climbed Everest. He's like Hercules, the only person to earn his spot Bro. with the gods. His royalty. Booker T, he took this character changed to the moon, bro. King Booker! It's fucking fantastic, bro. Look at the pinky. It's not that easy to be so entertaining, yet still generate heel heat. However, yeah. Booker was able to do it. He in was so part, good, so bro. JBL's <laughs> tremendous commentary. King right Booker there. is not only the greatest wrestler in SmackDown, he's also the best commentator on SmackDown. He won't be saying, oh, hell, he's royal. Royal people do not use language like that, Michael. That is long has it in for King Booker. Number eight, Corey Graves with multiple wrestlers. For Corey Graves will include multiple wrestlers simply because Graves does a great job putting each talent over on commentary to the point where he has numerous favorites. Cena and Joe. John oh, Cena. Oh, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sit down, John Cena. Here it comes. Kinshasa. This is especially true in the case of the revival. Yes, yes. A Times, yes! <laughs> like one of those you hear people talk about the time they saw Elvis live or the time they saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Yeah, it's transcendent. Every time the revival steps in the ring, Tajiri and Tazawa are my favorite tag team. It's only because the revival aren't in the ring, but you can. <laughs> yep. Yes. Rusev. Byron, when's your birthday? August 20th. Cancel. Rusev Day. <laughs> and he was eliminated by Slater. Yeah. Sheamus' birthday is on Rusev Day? Well, oh, Byron, let me ask you a question since you're such an expert. When's the last time The Undertaker won a casket match on Rusev Day? And of course, Corey pays special attention to his wife, Carmella. Mm -hmm. She's hotter than hell. She's sweeter than honey. Mella is money when she becomes raw women's champion we may renew our wedding Val saxton triple h told me about a real romantic spot here in Vegas. <laughs> that is such a wild reference triple h told me a real romantic spot here fucking wild reference <laughs> this is the part of the show where twitter gets mad at me for quote simping yeah. but the fact of the matter is i know what it's all about unlike everybody at home typing with their thumbs Number seven, <laughs> Dude, i know i know what the real deal is i know what it is like <laughs> that's my wife i can i can say these things because i'm married to her you guys y'all just wish Y'all had the opportunity. And Shawn Michaels. Vince McMahon is often remembered for his very close relationship with Shawn Michaels. Very close relationship. Dream has come true for Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels! Vince would go crazy over Michaels on commentary to ridiculous levels at times. Uh -huh. And that's why Shawn could never do no wrong. He was his... He was his golden egg. Sean can never do no wrong in Vince's eyes for the most part. Unbelievable. 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 Tremendous. Unbelievable. 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 
That's a crazy McMahon's visual. McMahon's yelling and fawning over HBK was a staple of the new generation era. But you want to talk extraordinary, it won't get any more extraordinary than that man right there, the leader of the new WWF generation. One foot, one foot, one foot. Vince set Sean away with a lot of behind the scenes. Meanwhile, on screen, the heartbreak kid could do no wrong in the eyes of the mm -hmm. chairman. Number six, <laughs> Pat McAfee and Jey Uso. Back yep. during his days on SmackDown, Pat McAfee was known for getting up and dancing along to Shinsuke Nakamura's uh -huh. entrance. We are living a great life right now. Can't wait for Pat this to be able to come back to WWE television. Yeah. But after Jey Uso took WWE by storm in 2023, Pat became a huge fan. <laughs> he eating of the people whenever Jey entered the arena, thus helping Jey and his entrance feel even more big time. How could you not call the whole place? Is that what Enjoying uh, Jey Uso and the WWE fans here. I'm eating all over myself. I'm eating all over myself. <laughs> it works. <laughs> That's energy. And then I'm like, I'll go to look at right now. I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> rubbed off on Michael Cole, who also enjoyed getting uh -huh. involved with the yeet. Although McAfee had to teach Cole how to yeet correctly. You're doing it too early. Premature yeeting right now. <laughs> Premature yeeting. You're right on rhythm with that bone finger. Oh. Yeet! Corey, I'm not McAfee. I can't get up on the table. I'm too old, but I can still yeet here at ringside. <laughs> you got your yeet bone finger, Cole. Stop yeet. I'm yeet. <laughs> Number five, Bobby Heenan and Ric Flair. When Ric Flair joined the World Wrestling Federation, Bobby Heenan made the Nature Boy feel larger than life on commentary and during interviews. Mm -hmm. The greatest mind in this sport made the phone call. Give me a big woo. Woo! There you the have it. Roddy Piper. Champion. Let's give a big one. Woo! The brain put over Flair so well that even if certain WWF fans had never seen Rick before, they knew he was a massive star. You want to compare the man that wears this belt to Hulk Hogan? <laughs> that would be like comparing ice cream to horse manure. We're in the money, yes. <laughs> we are in the money. And I'm talking about the new WWF champion, Rick. Flair. Heenan stuck up for Nate in hilarious fashion, including by demanding everyone be fair to Flair. Yeah, take <laughs> This isn't fair to Flair. Be fair to Flair is the way to do it. If you don't want to be fair to Flair, then do it the way you're doing. But if you really want to be fair to Flair, to be fair to Flair, that's the way to do it. Don't start with a fair to Flair. Only a man is fair as Flair. But show up at WrestleMania. Will you stop it? Well, they said Flair wasn't fair about what he's done, but Flair's always been fair. Everybody knows how fair Rick Flair's been, and if you can't be <laughs> fair to Flair, who can Flair be Flair fair to? So if you're fair to him, there's no reason why you shouldn't be fair to him. He's fair to you. I always said Rick Flair's the kind of a man I say be fair to Flair. If Flair can't be fair to you, why should he be fair to Flair? But Flair is fair to you, so you should be fair to Rick Flair. Would you say so? Let me be fair. Makes sense to me. Number three, Makes Michael sense to Cole me. and Cody Rhodes. Ah, uh, yeah. Season, Michael Cole regularly wax lyrical about the Miz. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Bro, he was like the super fan of For The Miz, bro. <laughs> look at him, bro. But no matter if he was heel or face, Cole would repeatedly cheer on John Cena to ridiculous levels. <laughs> uh, I cannot believe what has 
fire. But this was more of a case of Vince McMahon ordering Michael over the headset. I've seen John Cena come, overcome so much adversity in his career. Because you're a homer. What do you do is hang on to John Cena. Yep. JR used to hang on to Steve Austin. So does everybody. <laughs> Stone Cold! Stone Cold! Stone Cold! So does everyone. John Cena's my oh, best friend. But Cole's best work came during Cody Rhodes' ascent towards the WWE Championship. <laughs> to the American dream! Mm -hmm. Hey, Ro Roman Reigns, what inning are we on anyway? The voice of WWE was essential in telling Cody's story and helping him finish it. I That's... cannot think of a better person to represent where WWE is going today than Cody Rhodes. After all, it was Michael that first said, finish the story. Finish the story mm. at WrestleMania! A phrase that got over huge and ultimately defined the American Nightmare's journey and capture of the title. Yeah. Because at WrestleMania 40, you get to say for the first time in the history of this company that a Rhodes, Rhodes. is undisputed WWE champion. For the first time, a Rhodes can call himself yep. WWE champion. Beautiful Cody moment. Rhodes finished the story. Cody Rhodes finished the damn story. Sometimes this business just gets you right in the heart. Number four, yep. Tony Schiavone. Classic moment. In WCW is a special moment anytime Sting appeared with Tony Schiavone's legendary voice on call to yell out the Stinger's name. It's Sting! <laughs> he's alive and he's here. It's, it's not Kevin Nash because it's not Tony. It's Sting! It's Sting! <laughs> It's Sting! It's Sting! It's Sting! Oh my! It's Sting in the... Sting is here! He's in the stands! He's got the bat! Shivani remained a pivotal piece of the icon's presentation in AEW. <laughs> <laughs> Sting! Look! He's it's Sting! Oh my god, look at this! It's Sting! It's Sting! <laughs> Hype and reaction was spectacular as fans couldn't wait to hear Tony scream, It's Sting. Oh, oh my god, it's Sting! It's Sting, Tony! It's Sting! <laughs> it's Sting! It's Sting! You tell him this is Sting! Ready? It's Number two, The King and The Rock. Mm -hmm. Jerry The King Lawler's love for the likes of Deborah or the cat could have warranted an inclusion here. Let's yeah. hear it for Deborah and her puppies! And her puppies! Hey, we yo, decided that's to focus wild. on the King's support for The Rock. Lawler was the great one's biggest hype man, with priceless reactions, screaming, and laughing along to the People's Champions promos uh -huh. and comedy. <laughs> Even though Jerry was a heel, there was no way he could fault the Brahma Bull. Just bring it! Oh my gosh! Just bring it, JR! It's the People's Employment Agency. It says the first one, what you could do is you could go right back to the Waffle House and sling hash all day. <laughs> or 20,000 other maniacs. Or 20,000 screaming Canaanites. <laughs> so shut up, bitch! Oh! oh. <laughs> One of the King's famous catchphrases was his signature call hyping up the Rock's people's album. Yep. Most electrifying move in, in sports entertainment. Yep. Look at the crowd, bro. Look at that, bro.
Yep. Number one, JR and Stone Cold. There isn't a more iconic. I knew it had to be number one. It, it had to be. It's it's Stone Cold and JR, the greatest wrestler commentary duo of all time. Some would say, you know, there's other people, but I'm 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 going with Stone Cold and and, and uh, JR. Any commentator and wrestler pairing than that of good old JR and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that's the bottom line. You know why? Yes, I do. You're damn right, because Stone, Stone Cold, Cold said, said so. so. Sure, the Ralph Stokely was raising all kinds of hell during his heyday. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. What would it all mean if Jim Ross wasn't on the call, going just as crazy as we were while watching along with us? This is a crazy segment, too. Yep. JR was crucial in making And I got got the Stone Cold Steve Austin show you. I, yeah, I got it on right here. I didn't even plan on this. I just had it on today, so it made sense. It fits. Making Steve feel like a superhero while still promoting his blue collar persona. Something Ross himself maintained since he was an everyman just like the fans. Stone Cold will never be employee of the month. <laughs> Jim could make it feel like the world just ended if the heels took over. Yup. What? Well, what? It feel like the entire universe had been <laughs> saved if the baby faces came out. <laughs> yup. Yup. <laughs> and nowhere was this more prevalent than when Austin opened up a can of war pass. Steve Austin is one top SOB, and he is Stomping the mud hole. Yep. Ross said it best. He was the toughest SOB in the WWF. And Stone Cold Steve Austin is the toughest son of a bitch I ever saw. The toughest son of a bitch in the WWF. Ah. Stone cold, 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 stone Yeah. <laughs> now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out a similar video. Ah, uh, man, this was a classic video too. We we checked this out a while back, man. This is this is great, bro. Got to get this a like, bro. This man, videos like this, it just puts a smile on my face. <laughs> I love videos like this, man. It just. It just makes you remember the good days, man. Not to say that WWE is not killing it right now, but it's just something about the nostalgia and my childhood, seeing that and hearing the voices of these iconic uh, commentary, you know, commentators to some of our favorite wrestlers. It's, it's always a good moment. Comment down below. Let me know your favorite wrestler commentator duo if it wasn't listening to this video. But I appreciate all love support. Road 2, 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.